Good morning, everyone. This is Dan with Senior Ministry E-Bike Nation. Going to get out and do a 30-mile ride today. Um, excuse me, I've got a cold, so hope you can bear with me through the uh, video. Again, Dan with Senior Ministry E-Bike Nation. We're going to be taking the Cy Rusher today, a little different. And we're going to get her on a 30-mile ride today, so I'll see you on the trail. Good morning, everyone. This is Dan with Senior Ministry E-Bike Nation. We're going to be doing a uh, probably a 30 mile ride today. It's very nice out here today in southwest Ohio. It's about 50 to 52 degrees. So I figured it was time to get on the beast, which I call the Cy Rusher. As you noticed on my um, electric bike company bike. I call it nostalgia. But this one here is truly fun to ride. Again, it's a um, 20 inch fat tire bike. And it, just to get it out on the trail, it's a lot of fun. I really can't r wait to get it out in uh, off-road conditions like on a um, dirt trail somewhere I will be shooting that video this spring so stay tuned for that been fighting a cold here for the last three or four days so bear with me just a slight breeze today but it's just gorgeous. Cold or not, I could not pass up this day to ride. We are gonna be stopping at the uh, food blessing box and drop off a few items, like I always do. Really in pedal assist two right now, which is a very comfortable speed on this uh, Komoda. The cadence of the pedals is really good. But I'll be bumping it up to three before I get up to the hill where we turn on. And then stay in, stay in pedal assist three pretty much all the way to the halfway point. I hope I've got my camera angled right today so you can see everything. That drives me crazy to sit around that house. I'm not one that can retire and just sit around, watch TV, and let life go by. I gotta get exercise, be out like this in nature. That's why I so always highly promote these e-bikes for seniors and people with uh, minor disabilities where they can still ride an e-bike. Because you'll really get some uh, good exercise when you get out like this. It changes your whole mindset about everything you got going on in your life. It just makes it so much smaller things to worry about. Because when I get out on this trail, I'm not thinking about everyday things. I'm just enjoying my ride in nature and people that I see. As I mentioned earlier, as far as comfort, 
my electric bike company by far is the most comfortable bike out of all three of them but this is my uh, best bike to ride just for fun this is the one I did get a video up yesterday if you didn't see it. I found out it took forever to upload because I had forgot I changed the settings. Instead of filming at 1080, I was filming at 2.7 on my GoPro camera. <clears throat> and it took forever. I'm talking. 12 to 15 hours to upload that video and I couldn't figure out why and then after I thought about it is because I changed that resolution to 2.7 so we went back to 1080 just for upload purposes I'm not sure there's a lot of difference between 1080 and 27 or 4k I'm not sure about all that somebody might be able to answer those things for me I just know my GoPro 9 has been the best camera I've used for uh, filming, especially for the stability of the video. But it's just a beautiful day out here today. Got a guy up here on shorts. Looks like he may be pushing somebody or something. On your left. Yeah, pushing a little girl in this in her stroller. Look like that. Look like that was cool. supposed to have decent weather the rest of this week we had that really really cold snap just right before Christmas like everybody did and that's been it and I'm getting ready to do some uh, growing my seeds on uh, heat pads here in the next couple weeks and then once everything germinates I'm gonna put them out under my uh, grow lights in my garage so if there's anybody interested in those videos, put it down in the comment section. I also grow with uh, hydroponics, where I will grow plants in grow bags, put them in uh, rain gutters, kiddie pools. There are so many different ways that you can garden with hydroponics, that, uh, and it works. I've done it for several years. So if you guys would like to see soil mixes and how I do that, I'll put a video up about that. And I'll be doing the video throughout the year and give you updates on how everything looks. And that's something I really enjoy doing is uh, gardening. Not sure I like it as much as I do e-biking, but it's close. That's how I fill my time. Yeah, we'll bump it up to pedal assist three. Again, this is about the only little hill we have on the whole trail. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, 
have a cruising along almost 18 mile an hour on the flat surface in pedal assist 3 very comfortable speed I wanted to get out yesterday but that cold was hitting me pretty hard yesterday morning and I knew yesterday afternoon it was going to rain so I didn't uh, be able to get out yesterday at all. I normally start my seeds towards the end of January inside on uh, heat pads and then once they start then I'll go to I'll put them under the grow lights and let them grow to time to put them in the ground actually give me a couple uh, kitty pools this year and show you guys that gardening how to grow vegetables and grow bags in the kitty pools I'll do that probably uh, grow my bell peppers and my hot peppers I'll grow all them from seed I need to order my seeds for that stuff I found a company out of uh, Indiana that seems to have really good seeds at a reasonable price I'm not sure yet I'm going to grow my tomatoes from seed this year I didn't have real good luck with that last year because a lot of the seeds that came up and germinated, they weren't what I put in the uh, seed trays. It was a different variety and I heard about that going all across the country, people talking about that. So I may just buy my uh, plants from the garden center this year and go from there. But I will be doing uh, my pepper plants and I don't know, I may try some uh, some cauliflower, some of that stuff from seed. But there's really a trick to uh, stop your plants from not getting real leggy once you put them on the heat pads. Because once you're on those heat pads and you let them just keep growing, they're gonna they're gonna reach to the wherever the light is, maybe in the room or the window. And they get real leggy and they don't do real well after you gotta get them off those heat pads once they germinate. And get them under your grow lights. But I will show you guys all how to do that if you guys want me to do it I know this is a bike channel but I like to mix in some other things with it too trails are still pretty wet from yesterday 
Must have rained last night as well. I like my side rusher because it's got the percentage of my battery instead of the watts or the voltage. I don't like the voltage near as much as I do the percentage. Now I can uh, convert that and calculate what the voltage is and how much battery you have left. Coming up here on the blessing box. See what we got. Yeah. Got quite a few things in there today. So people are um, keeping up with it. Uh, I'll be putting my uh, normal ramen noodles. A uh, thing of toothpaste, some um, dish detergent today. All right, so we're going to be putting in some uh, game dish detergent, putting a uh, thing of crust toothpaste. And of course my ramen noodles. Again, quite a few things in there today. A little free pantry, take what you need, donate what you can. Feed the creek. Shut my bag up here and we'll continue on our ride. I'm a big coffee drinker. I really started drinking coffee a lot when I was in the Navy. Back in, oh, 1968. That's been a while. For all you veterans. That's about all we did was drink coffee besides painting the ship or doing whatever. Yeah, military life taught me a lot. I actually quit in my senior year of high school in January of my senior year. Went into the Navy, my parents let me. Hated school, very, very much so. Was not for me. So I uh, joined the Navy. And I'll tell you, when I come out of boot camp, up in Waukegan, Illinois in February, pretty cold. I uh, I went in, as you may say, as a, a kid, but I come out as a man. So that was a uh, experience that really teach me about uh, unity, discipline, and working with others. Got married to my beautiful wife in 1972. We've been married 50 years. This past May, so we're going on 51 now. And uh, we struggled mightily when we first got married. Financially, everything. So, uh, that's why I'm so passionate about this food ministry my bike ministry because I've been there and done that. I've been on food stamps. I know what food insecurity is. And that's why I'm so passionate about it now. But 
Yeah, this bike, uh, I bought this, uh, I bought this last um, July 4th, I believe. So I've been riding it uh, almost seven months now, something like that. And I got almost 1,350 miles on it. I've had absolutely no problems with the bike whatsoever. Of course, I purchased an additional battery for it. I carry that in my bike bag. So once we get to the halfway point, I'll be changing the battery out. It's a great bike though, I mean, less than 12 inches, you can step right over that bottom bar and get on this bike. So that's why it's so uh, good for uh, seniors and people with minor disabilities that have problems with their legs and stuff. I find it harder for me to get over my 26 inch aerial rider because that bar comes across the top and I gotta really bend that bike over to get on it. So that's when I purchased the Psy Rusher. And of course, Electric Bike Company sent me the uh, Model R that I've reviewed a couple of videos prior to this. And it's definitely my most comfortable bike, but it does not have the speed that this one does. I mean, this bike will get up to 26, 27 mile an hour if you want to with a fairly fully charged battery that is. But typically I can ride at 18 to 20 mile an hour in pedal assist three. And that's where I'm at right now and I'm 20 mile an hour. And that really is the max speed for the trail. As I mentioned to you guys before, I will be stopping at every stop sign from now on in. On your right. It's just something that I do. Had a few people that, you know, if if I'm going through some stop signs that I know nobody ever goes through, I'll cautiously look and cross it. So I'm not saying I won't go through them. I'm just saying I, on any intersection that's got cars all the time, I'm gonna stop at that stop sign. That is the law. I did have a couple people come on my channel and they was being haters about it. Of course, they wasn't subscribers as well. They just troll these channels. I've actually had to, to delete a number of people off my channel because they come in there and say really things that are not uh, beneficial to the channel and not beneficial to others. I'm not one of those people that like drama. Uh, that's the reason I don't have an Instagram account and TikTok and all that. I think that stuff's all nonsense. That's for younger people. We only got 20 miles in the last couple times, but we're going to get 30 in today. And with me riding that electric bike company bike, I've only got the one battery for it. And I don't trust that thing to do 30 miles. Now 20 miles, it still had about 49% of the battery left. I'm not sure how much I believe that. And I wasn't gonna run out of battery and have to push that bike back 
due to me not having another battery. I didn't want to have to push that bike back and put it in walking mode and walk it five or ten miles. I probably will purchase another battery for that bike. But there wasn't uh, an almost $900 for that battery that's on that bike for additional battery. They use quality cells. I mean, they use LGs and Samsung's cells in there, but and so far I have not found an aftermarket battery and I really don't want to buy aftermarket batteries. I would rather use the uh, company manufactured battery because I know I can send it back and get a replacement pretty quick. And with Electric Bike Company, they have a five-year warranty, I believe, on their batteries. Where most aftermarket batteries, or even most e-bike companies for that matter, they only got a one-year battery replacement. Where Electric Bike Company has five-year. That's putting it out there. Boy, this almost feels like a spring day out here. As they say, don't let January deceive you. I've seen pretty rough uh, Februarys and March around here. But I can never be a snowbird and go to Florida. A lot of people like doing that, but I don't. I'd rather be home. I grew up in this area and this is where I'm going to stay. Yeah, my wife and I, we stayed within a mile of where we grew up, is where we live now. So we didn't stray far away from home, obviously. Both of my sons and all my grandkids are still here and their spouses, but you know, as they get their furthering degrees and they want, they want to move out, my grandkids. But I'm glad I have both of my sons right here. Now, if a job took them somewhere else, I would agree with that. I mean, something to help them further their career. We have quite a few people out today. So we got a maintenance vehicle up there on the left. Morning. They do a nice job keeping these trails cleared. They're always out here doing something, keeping trails really nice for people. On your left. And as I mentioned before, we have some of the best uh, bike trails in the nation here. Ohio is one of the top states for uh, bike trails. I mean, we may not have had the scenery that some people have, but as far as network of trails, we have them. They got a couple vehicles up here. Well, how about that? They're putting in a park bench up here. That's nice. That'll help them walkers for sure. There's quite a distance between these um, areas where they have these benches, so that's gonna really help some people. There again, I was talking about the parks department. That's what they do.
On your left. Thank you. We've come uh, almost nine miles now. Still got about 71% of my battery left, so that's really good. Open one of my subscribers up on me up in Michigan get a rider new uh Cy Russia Komodo more. She was excited to get that bike on my review. Then she got it and she had a, a rotor that was bent. So they had her take it to the bike shop, I guess, and get that straightened out. If not, they were gonna send her a new one. So I hope she gets out and is able to enjoy more on her bike. Let me know uh, how many gardeners we have out there and how many people would like to learn a few new tricks to gardening. I'm no master by no means, but I've done enough now where I feel comfortable doing some videos on some of the stuff I do and I'd be more than happy to share that with you guys. I can actually do it on this channel. But yeah, put down in the comment section, let me know what you guys think about that. I get really excited this time of year. Just to go through the process of gardening. On your left. I do a lot of composting, and here's just a little trick I can tell you that I've been saving toilet paper rolls, the cardboard after you get done with the toilet paper. That makes a outstanding carbon source that you need for uh, composting. So any kind of uh, things like that you can use, or cardboard, or you really don't want a lot of colored cardboard. You want pretty plain card cardboard. You don't want to use too many different colors of ink on your left. Amazon boxes are probably fine, but you really want to shred that up into really small pieces, and I'm getting ready to do that. I put a big box right on the top of my garden uh, when I uh, put my leaves on there this fall, and it's pretty broken down now with the moisture, so I am going to chop it down even farther, and then I'll till all that in. I've got a uh, compost barrel that I'll uh, go ahead and empty it in the garden, and uh, I should have some pretty good compost. 
But yeah, there's uh, soil mixtures or mixes that I can uh, show you guys how to get really the perfect uh, soil mixture for grow bags that does a really nice job. You're kind of playing God for that plant when you do that. Now, I didn't have a lot of success last year on tomatoes here in Southwest Ohio, and I heard this from a lot of other uh, gardeners too. I got a lot of blossom in rot this year on my tomatoes. It didn't matter if they were in the ground or they were in grow bags. I did get a lot of that last year. And I know that is a calcium deficiency, mostly. But I'm gonna to try to adjust that this year and see if that helps. Or I could have just got bad seeds. I don't know that. So that's why I'm thinking I'm gonna buy my um, tomato plants from the plant this year, from the garden center. And unfortunately, my back of my house faces north. If I'd have known that when I bought my house, I'd have definitely tried to find a house that faces to the south on the backyard so I can do a nice garden. I mean, I do okay with these uh, hydroponics because I can put the grow bags on my driveway up off the uh, surface so the heat don't get to them and I can get them out in the sun to get these six to eight hours of sun that they require. So I'll be doing a couple things a little differently this year you may see than what I'll talk about I've done in the past. I mean there is some truth to having a green thumb somewhat but anybody can learn how to garden they really can. I mean, especially with something like kiddie pools, you could grow them on the 20th floor of a uh, apartment building if you want to, on a patio outside. But I'll explain all that once I get into it uh, this spring. I try to be as natural as I can. I don't like using a lot of herbicides and pesticides. Funny hearing me say that when I'm an ex-pest control owner of a company for 40 years. But I really don't. I, even when I was in my company, I tried to avoid using a lot of uh, pesticides. I may use a lot of uh, baits. There's one of them stop signs I was telling you about. I know nobody's coming through there, so. Um, but I'd use a lot of bait formulations and different things to be a little safer for the environment especially. I'm not a tree hugger by no means. I'm not really into all this Green New Deal stuff. all these world forums I'm just not into all that stuff but I try to protect the environment where I can around my own little property Another stop sign I typically never would stop out, but I'm going to. But I've been cruising along pretty good at uh, almost 20 mile an hour on pedal assist three. <coughs> Excuse me.
It's just right up here. I know that they have both gates completely shut. So nobody's going to get in or they're not going to get out of this area. So these stop signs are kind of... They just don't make sense to have to stop at them. I could have picked a better day to ride today. I'd like you all to keep my wife in your prayers. She has to have some, um, she has to do a stress test tomorrow for her heart. And uh, she's got a valve that's only opening halfway. The, our family doctor didn't seem to be too worried about it, but we went ahead and went on to the cardiologist and we're gonna go through the steps to see if there's anything they have to do. She's overweight, she's diabetic. So it's a concern at that, and she's 69, she'll be, she'll be 70, um, 29th of this month. So if you want to wish her happy birthday on my channel, here's your chance. But uh, I'll be doing that all day tomorrow, so I probably won't be interacting a whole lot on YouTube tomorrow. Yeah, them stress tests, I think, take like three to four hours, so. You gotta go through that tomorrow. Then we'll have another meeting with the doctor after that, the cardiologist. Formulate a game plan, what he wants to do. She may have to have surgery, but I don't think they do like open heart anymore for valves. They actually uh, have this thing go up through your leg to fix the problem I'm not a medical expert I have no idea what that is okay, and we got a way out any kind of uh, surgery risk for her since she is overweight her age diabetic here's an interesting thing she's been taking um, a um, pet, a pill for diabetes called uh, Ozempic. And there's such a shortage on this medicine and it's really good because it's, it's lowered her A1C down really well. She's losing weight with it. But the problem is that it was also launched by the company for weight loss. So you got so many of these doctors prescribing this medication for weight loss, the diabetic people can't get it. My wife had to go one week without it because she couldn't get it. I went to refill it again yesterday because you have to get a refill, it's once a month. And I think it's kind of like the same pins that you use for uh, insulin, same uh, thing. But again, they told me the day before at CVS that they would have it after four o'clock, so I went to pick it up with a couple other items. And they're still out. They didn't get their shipment in. So I get it, people want to use it for weight loss. I get all that. But they're taking the supply chain away from people that really need it with uh, diabetes. So I'm hoping that uh, Ozempic can really ramp up their production on this medication because I'm, I'm, I've been watching other channels that I watch. One I highly recommend called Appalachia Homestead. Her name is Patera. She has a great video or uh, channel and her husband was on it and he can't get it anymore. And what I don't think it was for weight loss more than it was for he had uh, pre-diabetes issues, so he couldn't get it anymore either. So keep her in your prayers for tomorrow. Everything goes fine with that. And we know it's all in God's hands. We, uh, we realize all of that, but prayer never hurts, does it?
Well, it's been almost a month since I've been this way for so. I'm so used to just doing the 20 mile lately, testing out that new bike that I haven't been doing a lot of the 30 milers, but we are today. We're almost 14 miles now. Yeah, I'd like to talk a little about safety on these bikes as well. Um, I highly recommend that if you've got a place before you buy an e-bike where you can test ride an e-bike, to a bike shop, I highly recommend you do that before you just get out and ride one of these things. It's, it's a little bit of learning curve riding these. One thing you don't want to do is leave that throttle on or leave your pedal assist on when you get off or on that bike because that bike will lunge on you real quick if you hit that throttle. So most of the time I will uh, definitely put it down on zero before I get off that bike or get back on that bike. Now, when I'm doing some video, I may not do that so I can uh, not have to turn everything back on the computer for you to see what I want to show you. And if you've got bike trails, I highly recommend you use any bike trail over a road ride. Even neighborhoods can be dangerous. Let's just say I feel much safer on these bike trails than I do on the road. I've certainly ridden on the road, not much, maybe less than 5% of the time you'll see me on the road. But it's dangerous. I don't care how many lights you got flashing on you or that bike. People are not paying attention to motorcycles and bicycles. They just don't. And they can get very dangerous very quick. People are still out texting, talking on their phones, not paying attention to anything they're doing on the road. I still see it all the time and they pass the law in this state you can't even hold your phone when you're uh, in a vehicle, unless you're stopped. And I think they're gonna enforce that pretty quickly here in Ohio, and they should. So as far as the safety standpoint, I always recommend that you ride on a bike trail if you can. And obviously you always want to wear your helmet. I see so many e-bike riders and regular bicycle guys, they just don't wear helmets. They're risking their a serious injury to themselves by not having a bike helmet. Now this helmet I'm wearing right now, which I've mentioned on my other bike, a uh, bike helmet company reached out to me by email and wanted me to uh, review this helmet. So they sent it to me for free. They just want me to review the helmet. So uh, my followers and viewers can see this helmet. This is a very safe helmet. Most bike helmets, believe it or not, are not what I call crash proof up to about 20, 22 mile an hour. Well, this bike helmet is rated for crashes on your bike up to about 28 mile an hour. Big difference there. Now, I hope I never have to put that to test at 28 mile an hour. I may save my noggin, but I'm gonna have a whole lot of other issues you'd, you'd wreck at 28 mile an hour. But I'll do a little review up here once we get to the halfway point on this helmet. And of course, if you, uh, if you click on the link that I have on the video, get 10% off of this bike helmet just with my link I get paid a little commission for it but I highly recommend this helmet it's got um, 
three different kind of flash modes on it, which I really like. It's got a light in the front of the helmet that stays on all the time, which you just don't see on many bike helmets. They just don't have them. You have to purchase aftermarket things to put on those. So, anyway. I'll be doing a little review on that when I get up here. We've almost reached our halfway point. We've got about another five-tenths of a mile to go. You that have watched my videos in the past, you know where I'm at now. A little town called Xenia, X-E-N-I-A is how it's pronounced. A lot of people like to call it Xenia, but it's Xenia. And up here is one of the uh, hubs that'll get you anywhere going, any direction you want to go to. It's one of the most central hubs in Ohio. So I see a lot of people up at this hub. Might be a few today since it's so nice out. Might have got all our uh, senior bikers out today. I'm down to about 43% of my battery. That seems a little low. But again, it's not real warm out here. But the battery was sitting a while after I charged it to full. So it may have uh, drained it a little bit as it was sitting for the last two or three weeks. That would uh, basically have an impact on that. Well, we don't have a whole lot of riders. I see one car up here and that's about it. See a truck up there. Thought for sure this would get the e-bikers out today and the regular bikers. They may come out this afternoon, it's gonna get a little warmer. But up here is what I call the halfway point on my ride. Go swing around the building here, go to the other side like I always do. <clears throat> okay. And we'll be changing out the battery here for sure. Um, down to like 43% um, on the computer, on the battery. And. Um, the Strava app said I went 14.95 miles and the computer app says 15.5 so they're fairly close again I'm gonna go ahead and shut my um, computer off on my bike so I can change the battery out so we'll shut that down and we'll talk a little bit about the bike here Again, this pedal assist will go, um, let me turn this back on real quick. This pedal assist will go between one and five. There's one. If you get down to zero, it's basically off. You're not got any assistant at all on the pedals. Then you got one, which is eco, two, which is low, three, which is normal, four, which is high, five, it's called power. That's where you'll get about 25, 26 mile an hour on a full charge battery. So keep that in mind, it's got to be full charger. You're not probably not going to get that speed. It's got a uh, Zoom hydraulic brakes on it, front and back. That makes it really nice. This bike has also got front and rear suspension. There's your suspension in the front, and here's your um, suspension in the back. Very comfortable ride, actually. Again, this has got the stock seat on it. I left this seat on here. It's a very comfortable seat for me. And it's got folding brakes and a viewer of mine up in Michigan. I never really thought about why do they make folding pedals? Well, not brakes, but pedals. It's because if you have to walk that bike, you don't have that pedal hitting your shins. Remember as a kid how that happened? She mentioned that. But when you fold those pedals in, you don't have that issue. So 
I guess that's why they did it. Of course, you got your normal headlight up here and uh, your tail light on the back of the bike here. And this bike come with this uh, bike rack already install installed on the bike. So I actually purchased the um, Cy Rusher bike bag with it uh, as an additional accessory. Uh, you, I got that off their website when I purchased it. I'll have that all down in the link on my uh, description box. And of course, it's got a 750 watt Bafang motor, which is really top of the line, I think, of um, motors on e-bikes. It's got the uh, max uh, 750 watt that is allowable on the trails. So um, that is the top watt motor that you can have on it in most states. It's got 20 inch by four inch fat tires, which are really nice. They're uh, very comfortable. It gives you a little more stability on the trail as well. And of course, it's got disc rotors on here, front and back. And, uh, but that's just a little bit about the bike. Um, I did put in some bar end mirrors as an accessory to the bike. You just put them on the end of the bike here. Uh, I'll put a link in the description box for that. It's got a seven speed uh, Shimano shifter. I typically never go out of one gear down here. That's typically the gear I ride in all the time. If I want to go up a hill or something, I'll just throttle up it a little bit. I also purchased a um, bike alarm separate from this. I'll put that down in the description box. And uh, trust me, it's, it's very um, sensitive. I'll show you here. I'll go ahead and um, lock the bike. If I had to go to the restroom or something like that, that set it after you hear one more beep. There you go. Now, if you just jiggle this thing a little bit, and if you do it again, that thing goes crazy. So that's gonna minimize a chance anybody walking off with your bike. Now, I always recommend carrying an additional rope lock chain with you so you can chain it down somewhere as well. So those uh, two, uh, those two additional things will help the uh, somebody from stealing your bike. But anyway, that's just a little bit about the bike itself. I'll show you, um, I carry a can of fix -a flat with me. Um, helps really well if you get a flat tire in this back tire, it's a bear to change on a back tire. You gotta take almost that whole thing off and take it off the chain and everything and it's hard to do. So the fix a flat, if I do get a flat tire, I'll be able to get home with that. I don't anticipate getting any flat tires. I also had Tannis uh, liners put in these tires. It's kind of like Kevlar. So that's supposed to really minimize my chance of getting a flat, period. But if you run over a machine screw or you run over a, a roofing nail that's, you hit it just right, you're gonna flatten those tires. So they're not puncture proof. They're definitely highly puncture resistant. And, um, and I bought a coffee cup holder for this and I'll put that in the description box. I just mount it on my seat post. And the, um, get my lunch out of here. And my um, extra battery is right here. And I carry a um, extra, I carry a, um, a battery operated um, bike pump as well. You just recharge that when you need to, but it's a lot easier when you're out on the trail to um, use the electric battery operated. It's a lot easier, it's a lot quicker on pumping up your tire. I do carry a CO2 canister as well. People that ride bikes know what that is, where you can just also pump up the tire with uh, attaching it to your stem. Uh, the battery itself on this bike, by the way, sits in this down tube and it's got a uh, key up here to loosen it up and here's your charging port but this just pulls back which i'll be doing here in a minute but we won't be filming that and then i'll be replacing the battery on it so anyway that's all about the uh Cy rusher komoda that's what it's called it's a uh fun bike let's all say about it. it's a fun bike to ride so um I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this thing off and flip it around and we'll finish up the video for now. I hope you guys have enjoyed my video. 
And if you've got any questions, put them down in the um, comment section for me. And then if there's anything else you would like to know about uh, the e-bike, I'll certainly try to answer that for you. And again, uh, if you guys want me to do any gardening videos on hydroponics or whatever, put that down there as well so I can uh, find out the interest on that. And um, other than that, like my video, share it, hit that bell notification, and then hit that uh, subscribe button for me. And I will see you on the next video. Okay, we're back from our ride here, so... I thought I was going to uh, check out at the halfway point, but I want to show you what we did on the ride here as far as the analytics and the statistics. So here we are back and I was riding in power uh, pedal assist five there. I was doing 23, 24 mile an hour. It's still showing I got 35% of my battery left. Now keep that in mind. I changed batteries at the 15 mile mark or so. Uh, it's showing 30.9 miles. My Strava app is showing 29.89. So it's 30 miles and um, So I just wanted to show you um, A little bit about that and I wonder I forgot to show you this helmet as well This helmet from Nito XNITO has got uh, Really cool features on the back of it as you can see it's got that turn it off. It's got that flashing It's got a solid I like that one there and on every mode it's got a light that comes on in the front not many bike helmets have that so um, my hats off to Nido for sending me this helmet uh, they sent this so I could review it um, there is a 10% link or 10% off on the link in the uh, description box but it's a very comfortable bike uh, I'm sorry helmet and the uh, snap is not what you're normally used to seeing on a bike it's got these, uh, it's got like a magnet here that actually snaps this together. So that's pretty unique. And again, as I mentioned earlier, this helmet has got a crash tested 28 mile an hour on a bike. So that's above what most people um, or bike helmet companies can say about their helmet. So um, just wanted to show you that. But anyway. Had a great time on the side rusher i'll put all the links in the bottom of the description box about the bike things that i purchased and put any comments you have down in the comment section and then uh share and like my uh, video and hit that subscribe button and i will see you on the next video